Hey guys, what's good? Welcome back to another video. So, if you saw my review of Willowflex, a super cool flexible filament, you may have seen these little foldy shape things that I made. Basically, they're just the net, that is, the unfolded geometry of a shape, 3D printed with live hinge joints in a flexible material to make them foldable into the 3D shape that they are. I've made all five platonic solids in this form, but a great many solid shapes can be made like this. The process for designing these fun objects is pretty straightforward. However, I want to show it off since I think that making tutorial content is important for the growth of the community by teaching people f skills to, to do what they want. So without further ado, let's hop into 123D Design and I'll show you how to design a 3D printable foldable polyhedron. Alright guys, so here we are in 123D and the first thing that we're going to do is not actually design it. We need to find out some information first on the shape that we're going to create. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to start by just making a cube or a, as its official name is, a regular hexahedron. So the first thing we need to find is the net of the shape. So I've found the net of a cube here and keep in mind that there will be lots of different um, options. For example, this image, you can see that there are these, there are these 11 different uh, net options. And basically, you really can't go wrong with any of them. However, I'm just going to go with the common one that I'm seeing right here. Another piece of information we need to find that we can see in this image is what regular shape the polyhedra is made out of. So here we can see that cu the cube is entirely made out of squares. So now the last piece of information we need to find is the dihedral angle. So here I am on the Wikipedia page for the cube and we scroll down and we see that the dihedral angle is 90 degrees. So there we go. Now we can actually get to designing this. As we found out, the net for a cube is um, kind of a cross-like shape made out of squares. So we're going to go and we're going to make the sketch of a square. The dimensions don't really matter as we're going to be scaling the whole thing later and changing all the dimensions then. So I'm just going to leave it as 20 by 20. The next thing we're going to do is select it and use the extrude tool to bring it upwards. Again, this measurement doesn't matter as we can adjust the height later. So I'm just going to leave it at five right now. We're going to delete this sketch down here of the square and we're just left with this kind of box like shape. The next thing we're going to do is copy and paste this box shape as many times as there are faces in the finished um, polyhedra that we're trying to build. So a cube has six square sides, so we're going to make six of these boxes. So let's just copy, paste, and so that's two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to take one and we're kind of going to move it off to the side a bit. This is going to be our starting point where we're going to build off the rest of the net. So here's the point where it may seem like I'm making things uh, overly complicated. However, I'm trying to make this a process that can be scaled for really any uh, three-dimensional solid that you're trying to create. With squares, everything's uh, like perpendicular and parallel at 90 degrees. So it's, it would be easy to do what I'm about to do just by moving them around. However, since I want this to be usable in a variety of situations, um, I'm going to be using a different set of tools. You'll understand this better once I show a more complex example. We're going to, going to use the snap tool and we're going to select one of these side faces of the other squares here. And we're going to select, click one of those side faces and then one of the side faces on our starting face over here. And we're just going to keep doing that in order to build up the net of the cube. Now, what we're going to do is again gonna seem like overcomplicating the matter, but it's necessary if you're doing shapes that are uh, much more complicated than this. What we're going to do is we're gonna go to the project tool, 
we're gonna select the bottom face of any one of the cubes, just click it and then click it again and press enter and you see we made a square face. We're just gonna go along and do that for all the different squares. Now that we've um, generated uh, square sketches from each of the boxes, we can go ahead and delete all those solids. They should be grouped, so they'll delete all together. And now we have the net made out of these 2D sketches here. So now we've generated the net out of uh, these two-dimensional sketches now. And since we've done that, we can delete these solids here. They're grouped, so they should all delete together. And now what we're going to do is extrude up all of these faces. So as we extrude these faces up, the distance by which we move them doesn't matter, but what does matter is the taper angle. So you see down here there's this little rotation wheel, and what that adjusts is um, the, the angle of the taper. As you extrude it, you can make it larger or smaller. Now, the angle we need to taper it by is negative 1 times 180 minus the dihedral angle divided by 2. So I'll, I'll have that up on the screen right now, but that's pretty easy for um, for the cube since we have 180 minus the dihedral angle, which is 90, is so that equals 90, divided by 2 is 45, times negative 1, negative 45. So we can just type negative 45 into here, press enter, and there we go. That's the proper angle. So it'll make more sense why we're doing this in a moment, but for the time being, just extrude all those faces and set that, um, set that taper angle to the number we found, which was 45, negative 45. All right, so now that we've extruded all of those faces, we can go ahead and delete these sketches down here at the bottom. So you're probably seeing how this is working now. And let me just demonstrate by um, moving this shape. We're going to move the manipulator to that spot so I can demonstrate this. And if now you can see that if I rotate this 90 degrees, that's 89, 90 degrees, you'll see it lines up perfectly with this other one. And if I were to fold up all the faces, you can see that it makes a cube. But that's not what we want right now, so we're going to go back to this. So now is the point that we want to scale this. So you can just highlight the whole thing, select the scale tool, and basically set it to whatever size you want. Now that I've set it to the size that I want, we can go underneath it, and what we're going to do is select the extrude tool, click all these faces, and then we're going to extrude it by 0.4 millimeters. 0.4 millimeters is a good thickness as it provides decent strength um, to connect all the pieces together. Uh, without it causing it to be unflexible or, um, or hard to fold up. So now that we've implemented the bottom layer, it would be a good time to adjust the height of the individual faces here. So what height you put them to really doesn't matter, as I said. You can make them all the way into like pyramids like this, um, or you could make them very small. I usually go for something around five millimeters tall, which is what we already had it at. But for this example, I'll put it a bit more than that. And with that, we are done. So now I'm going to show a more complicated example. So let's jump to that. The next shape I'm going to build is an octahedron. So let's follow the steps again, and let's get the three pieces of information we need. The net, the shape that it's made of, and the dihedral angle. So here we see the net of the octahedron, and we can see that it's made up of equilateral triangles. And here we see that it has a dihedral angle of 109.47122. We're going to start just like we did in the last one. We're going to make, start by making a sketch of the shape it's made of. So for this, I use the polygon tool because there's no uh, triangular sketch tool. 
and I'm going to set the radius to 10, we can keep that as is, and we're going to set the sides to 3, because we're making a triangle. So now we have a little triangle here, and we can go ahead and extrude it upwards by an arbitrary amount. I'm going to go with 5 millimeters. We can delete that. So now we just need to copy and paste this shape we have here 8 times, since the octahedron has 8 sides. And with our eight triangular blocks, we're going to drag one out, and then we're just going to use the snap tool to attach other ones to it. So as you can see, we have the net of the octahedron just as we saw it, and we're going to now use the project tool to create faces from it. After that, we can delete all the solids there, and now we just need to extrude out each of these faces. So here's a little trick at this point. Since there are a lot of them and it's kind of a pain to do individually, you can extrude multiple at the same time as long as they don't share any lines. So these two triangles right here, they would share a line, so we can't extrude them at the same time. But these two, this one and this one, do not share a line, so we can extrude them both at the same time. So just select multiple faces that don't share a line, and you can extrude them up by a arbitrary amount. So now we're going to set the angle. Um, I've done the math, and with the dihedral angle um, subtracted from 180 divided by 2 times negative 1, it's negative 35 point two six four three nine and once we've set that we can just press enter and now we just need to extrude the other ones after we've extruded all the faces we can go ahead and just delete the sketches then we can scale it to whatever size we want then use the extrude tool on all the bottom faces that we have set it to 0.4 millimeters, and there we have it, the foldable net of an octahedron. As for actually printing the shape, just print it out on its flat side with a flexible filament such as NinjaFlex or WillowFlex. Note that the flexibility of the material will obviously impact how easy it is to fold up the shape. So, that's how you design a foldable 3D printed shape. This process can be used for any convex solid. Note that I say convex though, as making a concave shape would require hinges in alternating directions, which is something I'm working on but requires a slightly different design approach. The method I used in this video is quite similar to another video I made a while back about how to design a dodecahedron in 123D where I use the folding technique. I'll have that video linked in the description. Anyways, you probably all have the same question right now, which is, what's the actual purpose of these? To be honest, I started making these just for fun, really, but it could have some practical applications. The first one I thought of was education, where having this transformable object could be a good learning aid for, like, geometry. With these shapes, you can easily see stuff like Euler's number and some topological concepts. The other thought I had relates to some of the other work I do with robotics and materials, where I really like the idea of transformable structures, or just shapes that take a simple input in order to make a designated form. So in this case, folding in order to create a set shape. I'll have the downloads for all the platonic solid nets that I designed in a Thingiverse page, in the description. I hope you learned something from this, whether that be some design skills or an idea, and overall I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, then you should know what to do, and if you want to follow my work, then you can subscribe. I'll catch you later, XYZ Aiden, out.